Hello, I'm Raido Wust and in this brief video I will try to introduce how you can use uh, learning analytics in your Moodle course. This will be an introduction, introduction to this module, so more information can be found from the following uh, learning materials. But let's start first uh, defining what the learning analytics is. The key objective of learning analytics is to predict or detect unknown aspects of the learning process, which is based on data analytics and this data analytics is based on historical or current behavior. Now learning analytics can be seen in four different categories. It can be descriptive, what happened. It can be predictive, what will happen next. It can be also diagnostic, why did it happen, and also prescriptive, what to do to improve. Now Moodle itself provides different learning analytics models that can be trained and applied to a single course or at course category full system level. As those settings can be activated by the Moodle administrator only, we take the focus on the course-based approach in where just teacher user rights can be used to build up and carry out learning analytics at any course. So we do investigate the following aspects. Course main settings that support to carry out learning analytics. Descriptive learning analytics or let's take a look into integrated tools in Moodle that can help to do that. Also we take a look into course activities that enable to gather data to carry out learning analytics more easily. And we also take a look to data analytics externally using some common tool like Microsoft Excel or similar. What are sample inputs for learning analytics? Let's, let's just uh, bring up some examples. Input can be a completion of specific activity. But in addition, we can also add the deadline or the time frame when it was completed. Input can be also based on text analysis, um, analyzing grading and the number of attempts. Input can be also seen by comparing subjective and objective evaluations. For example, subjective evaluation is self-evaluation, which is carried out uh, during some module or with some learning material. But we can also apply objective evaluation at the same module or with the same learning material. And then we can compare those with each other. And what are the reasons why they are different? We can see input as a performance according to the study group. Different study groups may study differently or learn differently and we need to understand why it is so and what we can do to make it more even. Also input um, can be seen um, when we compare learning analytics in between study years. Also considering changes in course layout and or feedback based uh, changes improvements what we have made during so the years. Now this module is based on my own experience. I have been carried out um, e-learning based um, courses quite some time and of course learning analytics is not something uh, that you can um, apply only once and then it will stay like that. You actually make changes in your course based on that you can let's say more easily carry out learning analytics maybe next year. It is also important to consider what can help to carry out learning analytics. For example, do you use uh, midterm deadlines to use final deadline? Or maybe you have also indicative schedule, weekly schedule, and this is available for students so they can do their own time management. Indicative schedule can be used as a basis for learning analytics. And if the learning is module based, then we can easily apply also completion tracking, which is kind of a key possibility when we want to see learning analytics dynamically. But we draw examples later in this module. Now let's take a look into some key components what uh, Moodle offers us. For example, Moodle Gradebook, very common and uh, quite many are using it. 
So Gradebook can be used as an input to learning analytics because it can be easily downloaded and then it can be analyzed student by student or study group by study group. And then we can draw examples um, how students do perform in terms of indicative schedule by comparing when they completed some activity and we compare it against indicative schedule. Gradebook design is quite important aspect because um, if we consider that um, learning analytics can be more dynamic then we do mean that uh, we need to have uh, multiple activities in our course. Otherwise it's quite difficult to carry out learning analytics because uh, we don't have enough components to measure. So if grading is divided into grading components and each component gives some number of points or maybe it's just uh, past, not past grading, then we can take this um, and use it uh, when we carry out learning analytics. So what are the important questions when designing the grading process? It doesn't mean that uh, this is the only way to do it and uh, we teach differently and we use different approach how we teach. From this slide you can see just an example and the example which support uh, to carry out learning analytics. To be able to evaluate the student's progress dynamically, activities uh, should be laid out through the semester or through the half semester depending on the course subject or maybe this course is just for one month. This can be also kind of obstacle because um, if we don't use activities in our course uh, throughout the semester in our Moodle course or in hybrid learning then it automatically means that we need to redesign our course. But this is quite okay because um, once we start thinking about learning analytics we do need to enable it in our course so that it can be done more easily. For grading, scaled or passed, not passed type of gradings, different grading components can be used and also what deadline we can apply. Can we include indicative deadline? or we just use final deadline. And from here actually let's try to reflect based on your own course. Try to evaluate uh, different types of submission deadlines even if you don't use or maybe you just use those but try to evaluate indicative and final deadline and uh, based on your course how those can affect the dynamics of learning analytics try to include just one thought. Okay, I hope that you spent your 15 minutes or so. Let's move forward. Let's now take a look into different components or activities that can enable to gather data which we can use for learning analytics. So first component will be forum which is used by quite many teachers and in here of course we can measure the date of posting, completion time, against deadline. Quite easy here. Yeah? And uh, it is valid for many many activities. Now posting as a question or an answer can be also measured. For example how many points for a posting or for an answer. Once we start using a forum in our course it can be easily exported into external format or in the Moodle itself there are different um, possibilities, how we can analyze, how we can summarize the use of forum in terms of learning analytics as well. And we take a look uh, in the following learning materials what are the key possibilities. But let's move forward, let's pick another component or activity which is quite well used again, quiz. By using quizzes we can again measure completion of the quiz, execution time against deadline, also we can measure or we can see duration of the quiz attempt and the score and we can also compare it with self-assessments which we touch a bit later. Again we can export this data in different ways and we can do external analysis. But Moodle itself again includes uh, quite many possibilities to analyze those quiz answers as well. Let's move forward. Let's pick file which is used to carry out uh, picking up assignments and in here 
Obviously, we can measure completion of the file-based assignment, but also if we enable to improve the assignment presentation and we send it back and uh, then we get, uh, let's say, the corrected assignment. Then we can also measure in terms of learning analytics uh, how many attempts there were once this assignment was performed according to the requirements. It depends what kind of assignment it is. Quite often we use assignments as maybe an essay which a student uh, sent to us and that's it. But uh, sometimes uh, it can be file-based again and uh, this file-based attempt or assignment is not just correctly made. And we want to give midterm feedback to the student and also by doing it we let the student to improve the assignment. This data can be exported and analyzed externally. And the final component um, is feedback. Again, quite common component or activity that can be used uh, in our course differently. And in here we can measure execution time, but we can also take the feedback as a self-assessment and compare it with quiz attempt. As I said before, for example, we may have a self-assessment uh, carried out through feedback in some particular module and the same student did also quiz attempt and we can compare those measures. We can see examples how to do that uh, in later learning materials. And finally, let's pick up some summary views in terms of learning analytics. It can be just uh, component based. For example, in here you can see forums and uh, forum activities like posting or giving answers. And uh, in terms of, let's say, the semester, we can see the intensity of those postings. And of course, how many students are active just before the deadline. And we can compare this to another student group who are performing according to indicative schedule. Quite important measure that can be compared also in between different study groups. Also, as I gave an example before, we can compare execution time and indicative schedule, if this is shown to students, of course. And activity by activity, we can see in where student is behind the schedule and in where he is up and running again and maybe even ahead of indicative schedule. Of course, this is some specific um, methodology, how we teach in our course. And it doesn't mean that uh, we all have to do the same. It's just an example and opportunity to think about. And uh, talking about uh, thinking, then uh, let's do another exercise for reflection. And this time, let's try to analyze uh, study groups. Try to list, maybe you do use already some study groups at your course, but try to list possible study groups that you should analyze separately according to your course specifics. Okay, I hope that um, you did some reflection. So let's move forward and uh, let's talk about uh, different study groups for a moment. In here you can see similar examples that I showed you before, in where we compare did student performed or finished some particular assignment before the deadline or indicative schedule or not. And what was the number of days before or after. On the left hand side we can see a regular student crew and on the right hand side we can see students who are from open university or distant learners. Of course, we can see the number of students is different, but we can also see how the average student performs in different groups. Also, we can see or measure how student is maybe demotivated to continue with the course. Or maybe we can see also some cases in where student um, tries to pack up and uh, carry out all those different activities that they need to do and then they can finish a course successfully. Different analytics again what we can conclude from that kind of analysis and we can try to understand and then we can make changes in our course how to improve it, how to improve it for different study groups. 
Now also we can do some summary views um, based on study group and if we have carried out some basic learning analytics year after year or semester after semester then we can see how those key performance indicators are changing over time. And of course considering that each year we do or we try to improve the layout of our course, the process of the course. It's not just about uh, Moodle course but also teaching process. Let's summarize what you can do with learning analytics, what you can do during the course and what you can do after the course. During the course if you have shown some indicative schedule then you can always use some posting by using forum or similar feature in where you just uh, try to activate more students that even if you don't use uh, let's say final deadlines for the indicative schedule you can um, try to motivate that uh, student will try to complete some assignment before the deadline comes up. And you can also use various Moodle integrated features to help the student see how far she he is. We take a look to those as well in this module. So you can use forum to remind recommended deadlines on a weekly basis. I hope that this brief introduction was helpful to move forward and uh, to check the following learning materials and try to apply those methodologies or ways at your own course. And uh, don't be surprised if you start carrying out learning analytics. It is actually quite fun and not because of uh, extra time that you probably need but also you can understand your students or student groups at your course more easily and based on that you can improve your course layout.